Hello, my name is Professor Terrence Keel, and I am an associate professor in the Department of African American Studies in the UCLA Institute for Society and Genetics. And I'd like to talk with you about my summer session course, Race, Science, and Western Society. Now, in this class, I make the case that scientists have to overcome their indifference to racism and Black life if they're going to make amends for the racial violence perpetuated by Western biomedicine. This indifference is a symptom of nihilism. And what I mean by this is that modern biology and medicine in the West were made possible through the racism of white settler colonialism. This included slavery, land appropriation, warring European nation states over natural resources, grave robbing, the beheading of deceased native and African people, and the denial of indigenous sovereignty. Now these were the material and social conditions that made it possible for early anthropologists and physicians to study human diversity and in turn develop medicine and technology that has largely benefited white people. This is now an undeniable truth. Yet the violent legacy of white settler colonialism, along with the shadow of nihilism, continues to animate and haunt biomedicine. Now, some of you might have heard recently the controversy out of Princeton and UPenn. In May 13, 1985, the city of Philadelphia dropped two bombs in the compound of the MOVE organization, a revolutionary group of Black people opposed to capitalism and committed to environmental justice and interspecies coexistence. Founded in 1972 by John Africa, MOVE was originally named the Christian Movement for Life. Revolutionary Black religious movements have long inspired the most violent forms of reactionary white supremacy, from Denmark Vesey's slave rebellion in 1791 to the assassination of Martin Luther King. This was true for MOVE, which was seen by civic leaders and the press in Philadelphia as a cult to be feared and treated like an enemy of the state. This fear is what motivated the militarized attack on MOVE which included the use of explosives and military grade weapons that resulted in the death of 11 people, including five children aged seven to 14, who were either murdered on impact or burned to death. Now the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office turned charred bone fragments pulled from the ashes of the move house and gave them to the Department of Anthropology to help identify the remains. That's how they fell into the hands of Professor Ant, Alan Mann and Janet Mung in the immediate aftermath of the bombing. And to the horror of present day MOVE members in the Black community across the nation, the remains of a child killed in the police attack continued to be in the possession of the University of Pennsylvania Museum of Natural History, and were also used as artifacts in an online course presented in the name of Princeton and hosted on Coursera. The class uses as its main case study the events of 1985, producing as prime evidence a set of bones belonging to a young girl received from the ashes of the move house. Janet Mong teaches the course. A recently video footage of the course shows Janet describing the remains in horrifying detail. She explains that they consist of two bones that belong to a small girl and her teens that were held together because they were in a pair of jeans. The pelvis was cracked where a beam of the house had actually fallen on the young child. The fragment showed signs of burnt tendons around the hip joint. Janet then explains, quote, the bones are juicy, by which I mean you can tell they are the bones of a recently deceased individual. And she continues, if you smell it, it doesn't actually smell bad. It smells kind of greasy, like an older style grease. Now these comments are not just shocking and horrific, but they speak to a longer and older legacy of white supremacy and racism that has haunted biomedical research, particularly research around black life and people of color. And this class will give you the tools and the critical insights to analyze scientific publications and research and to be able to see how these troubling legacies of racism continue to haunt biomedical science. I hope you joined the class. Looking forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you.